Oh, okay. we won't know until it's open. Uh, I'll be quiet. All right, we're recording, so you can go ahead and call to order, Michelle. Great, thank you, Athena. So I'm gonna to call to order the February 16th meeting of the Governance Organization and Legislation Committee. And pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public, public are able to access the meeting in real time via Zoom or by telephone. And let's just see here. Doesn't look like we have any attendees yet, so. We don't usually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, we have a lot on the agenda today, and uh, I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry to interrupt. We just need nope. to confirm that everyone can hear and be heard can before hear. we get thank started. You. Yes. Sorry. Thank you. Nope. Thank you, Athena, for the reminder. Um, okay, so let's just go through and make sure everyone um, can be heard. So I'll start with you, Jennifer. Um, yes, I'm here. I can hear. Can I be here? Heard. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy. Present. Anika. Present. Pat. Present. Excellent. Okay, and you can hear me, right? So, <laughs> all right. So we do have a lot to cover and I wanted to begin by just giving us a bit of the lay of the land in terms of timing for some of these items so that we have a sense of how we might wanna move through this. Um, I was hoping to get a couple things, easy things um, taken care of right away, like the meeting schedule and approval of the minutes. So I'm thinking that's where we'll begin. Uh, but with the other items on our list, I wanted to um, share that I, from my perspective, the list of liaisons is our first order of business to get through so that we can get that to Lynn and Lynn can make assignments or however that works in the next meeting. Um, for the Tibetan National Uprising Day proclamation, it's my understanding that we have until March 6th. So we will have another meeting between now and then to get that completed if needed. Um, so then that leaves us with the town council rules of procedure. And as Mandy said last time we met, we have a report due at our next meeting on February 28th, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to be completed with the work. So what I'd like to do is get through those first two easier things, move on to the liaisons, and then look at the time and decide how we'd like to go forward from there, depending on what kind of time we have left. Does that sound like a good plan? Okay. <laughs> All right, excellent. So um, Mandy, are you still willing to be our document person to pull up stuff? Okay, thank you. Um, so if you could pull up our meeting schedule, our proposed meeting schedule. And I did my best. I, I used a template that George had used previously and then I did my best to check every date against the calendar to make sure there wasn't something else like a, a, a federal holiday or something happening. Um, there was one time I think around the holiday season where we sort of have a bit more time in between meetings. Um, so that was between November 9th and November 30th. Um, and then You'll see the final date is just a proposed date um, for the next GOL um, as it will be formed in that first meeting of the council of that, of that second year. Um, so any questions on this? Did it look doable, look okay? <laughs> okay. And Mandy and, and Pat, is this something that we'll want to vote, make a motion to vote on, or do we just have consensus on this? I think we can just go with consensus. Mandy knows for sure. Each committee does it differently. The only thing I would say is whichever we do, we forward it to Athena so she can put it on the website. Okay. Yeah, so if it looks good to everyone, I don't think we need to go through the vote. We'll just, um, yes, Anika. 
I think you're muted, Anika. Okay, I'm starting like I did yesterday, having myself on mute all day at <laughs> meetings. Um, so this this looks great for me right now, but like in the event for anyone, myself, that this nine that the nine to eleven during the weekday does become an issue, like how how do we go about that? Um, I think we we'll see like, it works for everyone, and if it's just one person, like if myself, like how. Yeah. No. Or, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Pat. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think if it, if you're talking maybe one or two meetings, that's one thing. But if it's starting to feel like that time on a regular basis isn't going to work, then we would bring that back to the committee and try to determine another day and time that works. And Mandy, I see your hand is up. So maybe you want to add to that. That's what I was going to say was if if that time becomes unworkable, just ask Michelle as chair to put on the agenda again discussion of meeting times. Um, it's happened multiple times in CRC um, and not always just at change of um, members. It happens sometimes just because the school year starts or the school year ends and something else becomes available or things like that or, you know, for us with kids kids schedules change and suddenly nope that time doesn't work so it, it happened before um and just take take it up with the chair and she can put it on a agenda item okay okay so great so i will send that to athena and or it's it's, it's actually already in there but i'll make sure athena has it and um great so let's move on to the approval of the January 19th and February 2nd meeting minutes, draft minutes. And I haven't formally gone through this process before. My understanding from watching other meetings though is that uh, I would first ask the group if there are any, so we'll start with January 19th and I'll ask the group if there are any edits that they, would like to make to the draft minutes for January 19th. Anika. I just had a quick one, uh, seeing as we are now, you know, we are going to be the, the fun committee as well, and we will have lots of attendees. I think that, um, well, let me get down to it. Um, within the area of the Black History Month proclamation, um, where it says that Miller suggested adding all of the names, that it should reflect that that was a collaborative, like a robust collaborative uh, conversation because there were so many that added important names. And Absolutely. That had served in Massachusetts, that's it. Okay, excellent. So now Athena, are you listening in and then would make that change or is that something I would wanna send to you with any other edits? I'm taking minutes now, so it's difficult to take minutes and edit minutes at the same time. Yeah. yeah. So um, if, uh, if if you or one of the other members can make edits and then send me the edited version that you vote to adopt, then I can post those. Perfect. <laughs> and I'm sorry, there's just one other I had. Sure. The last suggestion was um, where we're talking about Native American Heritage Month. We also discussed adding um, Indigenous Peoples Day. It was the two. Perfect. So what I would suggest is um, that Anna, Anika, oh, Mandy's gonna bring it up. Okay, that's great. I'm just working on it here. Let me find the areas. Ah, yes, I see, okay. How was that change for the first suggestion, Anika? That's fine. Or you could just write that the, the group. Yeah, I was going to suggest we could just say like on the second one, members suggested. 
um, that one. Yeah, Pat. Uh, apologies, because it might have happened at the next meeting, but we brought up Holocaust Remembrance Day and wanted to add that to the list. And I can't remember whether it was at this meeting or the next meeting. I think it was the next one. I don't remember. It was the next. I don't remember. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I remember too. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. And then the second one, Anika, that you had was, um, let's see. Okay. I think it is going, let's see. So it's below here. Okay, you passed it. And that could even include members as well because we all had input, but see where it's Native uh, yeah. American History Month and it should be end Indigenous Peoples Day. Like that? Yeah. That work? Okay, great. Thank you for those, Anika. Were there any other edits to this meeting minutes? Okay. Um, seeing none, so I think uh, we at this point then we'll move. So my understanding is that there will need to be a motion to adopt these. Um, and so I uh, probably should have had a motion prepared. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. There were a lot of moving parts. Um, so the motion, is, very the motion is just to adopt the January 19th, 2022 minutes as amended. And okay. I second it. <laughs> Great. Any further discussion? Okay, great. So, uh, Pat? What? How do you vote? Voting. Oh, <laughs> I'm moving on here. Sharp, right, Anika? Really sharp. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer? Aye. <laughs> Mandy? Aye. Anika? Aye. And I'm a yes as well. Okay, so that passes unanimously. Thank you. All right, so now we will bring up the second set of minutes from the February 2nd meeting. And I will ask the same question. Um, and I think Pat actually can start us off given uh, there might be some- well, I don't remember whether it's in there or not. I read it yesterday, but I can't remember. All right. I apologize. No, we'll, we'll take a quick, mm -hmm. take a look here. Okay. It may have been when we were talking about next agenda. Um, That's my uh, guess. I thought we, well, I thought it was more specific than that, but. Let me look at. Uh, it's not a big deal we can, as long as it gets in the minutes this time and somebody reaches out to, to Jennifer, which I actually I spoke to Jennifer um, even before we had our meeting so. Okay, great. So yeah, I see in my running list of future agenda items that we I did add Jewish American Heritage Month proclamation by April 25th. So we definitely talked about it. <laughs> well, I know uh, we talked about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> so let's just get it in there somewhere. <laughs> That's yeah. fine. Okay. And is that and, an April? Is 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 that month? It's April, actually April month Holocaust May. Remembrance Day. Oh, and it's Holocaust Remembrance Day. Okay. Yeah. That's in addition to the Jewish American Heritage Month proclamation, right? Okay. And so Jennifer, you're working on that Holocaust Remembrance Day with Pat, the two of you are working on it or is there? Um, 
I was going to work on it with Jennifer Moiston, but I didn't have Moiston. to work with oh, yeah. Jennifer Moiston. Okay. <laughs> I know. I thought the same thing. I was like, really? <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. And I don't remember anything about Jewish American Heritage Month, but we can. Uh, Dorothy Pam is working on that proclamation. Yeah. yeah. So we can. Yeah. And I, I saw an email that Dorothy had sent um, to the rabbi at the JCA um, asking for some input on that. And, and I think going to reach out to some other counselors as well. So, yeah. All right, does that look good? Yes. Okay, great. All right, anything else here? All right. So uh, then I will move to approve the February 2nd, 2022 meeting minutes as amended. Is there a second? Second, second. yeah. Doesn't matter, go ahead. Okay, Dan just seconds. <laughs> um, and let's, uh, let's start, we'll go in reverse order here. Anika? Yes. Mandy? Aye. Jennifer? Aye. And I'm an aye. And Pat? Aye. Excellent. Okay, so those are approved. All right, so we got those two things out of the way. Excellent. <laughs> um, so moving on here to the list of liaisons to town committees. Um, and this is something that I would like us to discuss and vote on today, if possible. Um, and so I'll begin by updating you on the meeting that Lynn and I had with Paul with respect to this list. Um, so I think Generally speaking, Paul's sense was that the list as we have it right now is good um, and that if counselors are interested in something, they, you know, should, then there should be a liaison for that particular committee. Um, I have a little bit of a different feeling on that. So I just wanna share that I, my feeling about liaisons, um, particularly after really looking at how they're, um, how they're spoken about in the rules and thinking about our capacity, I feel like it's, we'll get more value out of the liaison process if we really identify the committees that need them, that really genuinely need them for whatever reason in a particular year at a particular time. And that um, the sort of capacity that we have as counselors can be better spent um, if we're not uh, spreading ourselves too thin. And I also think that because meetings are open to the public, any one of us can attend a meeting that we're interested in attending um, and keep ourselves abreast to what's happening in those meetings. Um, so Mandy, would you bring up the, uh, the list that we've been working on? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so, the other kind of thing that I think we talked about with Paul that is useful to report is that he is working with um, his staff to potentially, and I think he said that it was Angela, um, to potentially create more standardization um, with respect to these town committees. So that like, for example, the websites um, look, have a standard look and feel to them. So when you go to them, the information is easily accessible and you can see where everything is. Right now, all of the town committee websites look a little bit different depending on who the staff lays on is or, or whatnot. 
Um, and part of that conversation led to, you know, how the staff could provide a training um, to the chairs of those committees right from the beginning to really help them to understand what their role is as a chair of a town committee. Um, and so with all of that in mind, these highlighted committees are the ones that I feel would be beneficial for us to have. And of course, um, it's open for this committee to decide if there are any others or if these are the wrong ones. Um, but given that we have uh, this list where chairs of standing committees are interacting frequently with town committees, being the planning board, affordable housing trust, the DAC and the TA, is it DAC and TAC? Is that how we call them? There, there are those. <laughs> Someone correct me. <laughs> um, you know, I uh, I think th these are the ones that I'm recommending, but now I'd like to open it up for discussion. Yes, Pat. Yeah, I, I these are uh, recommendations in addition to what we already have because the Disability Access Advisory Committee definitely utilizes their liaison um, for questions and uh, contacting uh, different people. So um, I would like to continue to be that liaison, but that's not the issue, but they definitely use their liaison. So I don't do. Yeah. Okay. So I would hate to see that not have a liaison. Yeah, that's great. I, I wasn't sure if it, you know, and I don't know enough about it here to know, like, I wasn't sure if with this TSO, um, what sort of interaction does TSO have with that particular committee? But it sounds like that's a strong um, liaison connection there, so. Well, I don't know what TSO, I mean, town services. Well, I guess basically what I'm saying, and I don't understand why the chair would necessarily be the representative uh, as a liaison. But that, that's that's fine, and if I don't become liaison for the advisory committee, that's fine too. But um, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think Mandy, would you speak to? Because I think this was your list here, um, where it was. If you could speak to that, that would be great. It was. Um, so so I the, the the area where it says committees where the town council committee chair unofficially serves as a liaison and then those four lists. I, I am the one that made that comment. Um, and that was based on my experience as CRC chair where I had to be in regular contact with the planning board. And then as we were doing the comprehensive housing policy with the affordable housing trust chair um, for just conversations for coordinating meetings for other things. And then my observations as a council member last term where the TSO regularly received reports from DAAC and TAC and TAC um, for the particularly the, the items that they dealt with regarding the public way. And so that made me believe, and I could be wrong, that, that the regular communication between DAAC and I assume it was the chair of TSO, it could have been the vice chair, I'm not sure who did those communications, but there was definitely communication between TSO and DAAC to facilitate comments from DAAC and TAC and in you know and recommendations and and input in the matters that TSO was dealing with and so my thoughts are having too many counselors serve similar roles can maybe be confusing that doesn't mean it has to be the chair of these bodies it could be a member of those bodies right um that the body decides this is the person that will be that contact but if we've got someone outside of say CRC trying to liaise with the planning board while I'm also liaising with the planning board to organize things like public hearings and all, um, that could be confusing for the planning board. Um, and so that's why I put that there. It's not, it, it was just a suggestion of mine where I thought these are committees where we already have regular relationships where we might not have to declare a specific separate liaison. No, that makes, may I speak? I'm sorry. Of I course, always, yeah. yeah. Um, that makes some uh, sense, Mandy Joe. 
Uh, but I still feel like I don't know anybody from TSO that was regularly in contact with DACA. Um, and it's not a bad idea to do that, you know, listening to what you're saying. So I'm not trying to hold my position because I can attend that meeting mm -hmm. anyway. Um, but there was, as far as I know, no real liaison work between the chair and I believe it was Evan um, and DACA. And that is problematic. I mean, maybe, maybe a direct connection there would be extremely valuable but it need, would need to be formalized and, and TSO would need to want to take that on. Mm -hmm. So may, may I comment? Of course, yeah. May so, so maybe for those four bodies, instead of it being a liaison from the council, we suggest or recommend to the council that there be a council liaison, but that liaison be chosen by specific committees from their own membership, something like that, so that DAAC has a liaison, but that liaison must come from TSO. Yeah. It, the council could potentially choose the liaison, but they also must be a member of TSO, something like that in our recommendation to the council on liaisons that it, planning board hasn't officially had one ever um, because of the communication that was already happening by the time we got around the liaisons between CRC chair and planning board and planning staff. but um maybe that's what we do something like that sort of recommendation where we just recommend that it be be a member of that a specific committee hmm. jennifer yeah i was just going to um agree i think that's a good suggestion and that it doesn't have to be the chair because that's putting a lot of responsibility on the chairs yeah so i think that's great and you know again as um like i usually i attend many of the planning board meetings just you know, because they interest me. So I think um, not with all the committees, but I think that you have other council members that probably base, you know, on what other their districts or, you know, their interest do tune in to a variety of these different meetings. I mean, I know people that attend, you know, the TAC um, meetings because, you know, that relates to what's going on in their district. So I think that makes sense that they're be um, like, as Mandy said, you know, a formal liaison between those committees, which you mentioned, the council committees and these others. And then, um, and I also agree with those three new committees that that makes sense to have a, you know, official council liaison to the three new committees recommended. Great, Anika. Uh, yes, yeah, so I, I agree as well. I think uh, streamlining the, the process, and, you know, as well as for clarity will help. Um, but I have a question in regards to, um, so the first group <clears throat> of committees, uh, and, and Mandy may be the best to answer this, do the committees ever reach out themselves and say whether or not that they would like Liz on, or is this, does this just come from um, <clears throat> council? making that choice, or those choices rather. We actually had a discussion about this at the last meeting um, with respect to the approach. So should Lynn be reaching out to all committees and asking if they would like a liaison or um, is it for us to decide and then sort of um, offer it? And of course, if there's more capacity and somebody does ask for one, which is what the rules of procedure say right now. Um, and I think it was gen generally the sense that reaching out and asking every committee might not be the right approach um, because everybody may like would likely say that they would like one. So really thinking critically about how we can get um, <clears throat> those committees that do say they would like one, how do we satisfy whatever their need is? It might be adding a liaison, but it might be some other way of satisfying whatever the need is. Um, so if you're aware, I think as a counselor, if we're aware of a particular town committee that has been asking for one or would like one, then that's um, something that we should bring to the table to discuss, to see how and why we might, you know, why and then how we might meet those needs. Does that, and if anyone would like to add to that. 
I don't think I that, that was clear. I probably just spoke. I meant where the outside committees, have they ever or have they been reaching out to request on their own? Um, separate from has the council reached out to see how many would and would want one? I don't know. Does anyone have experience with that? Um, where a committee has reached out and requested one? No, um, not particularly. I think early on at in our early in our term, there may have been a, some specific requests, but no. not recently that I know of. Okay. I'm curious though, Anika, what um, sort of the, where, what the, what maybe where that question is coming from? Because is there something there that might, we might want to consider um, beneath that? Oh, no, 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 nothing, uh, you know, behind it. I was just generally curious as to like how the committees, do they usually reach out? Have they ever? Um, and is it like a list like, okay, maybe all of the committees had wanted to liaison and that, you know, we weren't able to accommodate or, you know, they're not reaching out and we're just how exactly that worked. And um, yeah. Yeah. Mandy? Oh, I didn't, I don't have a comment on that one. I was just raising my hand for something else. Over something different. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, no, that's okay. And I do think looking at the rules again, it does say in there and, and we'll look at that part again, but um, it does say that something along the lines of if a committee asks, you know, then we should consider, I, we'll have to bring it up to look exactly at what it says. Um, I, oh, please, Jennifer. No, I just wanted to add that um, I guess I have a concern also where some committee is going to feel slighted if they didn't, um, you know, have a liaison. And I didn't actually realize until the last meeting that there are like 36 different committees. And that's why I think Lynn cautioned against reaching out to all of them because, you know, we don't have that capacity. So anyway, I was shocked to learn that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I think Anika made a great point in her comments that many of them are interacting with Paul, you know, for, and so there is some sort of interaction that is occurring between the, like a directly where Paul is interacting with them. So um, I think that was one of the points that Anika had brought up and Paul actually agreed to that when we were, when we met. Um, okay, Mandy, so just, I know you have um, something else. Is it pertaining to this list here still? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> go on. Yeah. Then. <laughs> no, um, I noticed that the, we saw, saw in addition to trying to draft a motion on this for a recommendation, which is what I was typing, um, I noticed the Board of License Commissioners is not on this list and I'm torn about this. Um, and so I, I wanted to bring it up. I'm one of the counselors that said, I believe it needs one. It was one of the places where I saw last term, the liaison actually was useful in bringing forth some potential matters that the Board of Health needed our help on that if we hadn't had someone following the meetings and their actions, might have resulted in no action from the council and therefore then overstepping of bounds by the board in terms of public way matters um, that we were able to solve because there was a liaison watching the regulations they were adopting and some of the things they were doing. So I actually saw that was almost the only committee I truly saw where a liaison was like, whoa, you need council action here, let's make it happen. Um, I've been in touch with the Board of License Commissioners for a couple of reasons. Um, and the one board member I've been most in touch with is hopeful there is a liaison. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I realize um, Alyssa believed that they had gotten themselves on enough sound footing that we don't need one to the board, that they're, they're operating extremely well and we don't need it. I, I am concerned there's, there's certain things I'm actually working on with them that have come through a prior chair and the board now for modifications to bylaws. At the same time, I think we're almost done with some of the stuff they need us for, that we've pretty much given them the authority they need for anything they might need. And so maybe we don't need one. So this is why I'm torn. I'm like, 
I'm going to still do my contact with them to make the proposals on bylaw changes that they're going to need and that they're looking at proposals for, yet that's sort of a liaison role, right, um, to bring stuff there, yet I'm not sure we truly need one for the next year or two because I think they're almost, as Alyssa said, set and are good. So, but I, I wanted to bring that up as to where do people think about a situation like that? Yeah, I'll add, um, I was really torn on this one too. And so I called Alyssa actually, um, because I wanted to understand what, where that recommendation she had made on the previous council toward the end had come from. Um, and basically she said what you just said, Mandy, um, she, thought she that that sort of transition to them having that footing was really important to her um and she now in her mind feels like they are on that solid footing and that they don't need a liaison anymore but i do think that what you're saying in terms of the things that you've been interacting with them about those things are important and so i wonder if that can just continue informally and then um you know and then see how they do without one. Um, and Mandy, or uh, I'm sorry, Pat, did you, or no, Anika, you, did you have your hand up? Uh, I did, but you covered it. I was just wondering if there was some kind of an informal type of check-in that could go on. So if there's anything that needs to be caught ahead of time, Mandy would be it or whomever. Yeah, I, I mean, I will say the things I'm working on with them now will that will continue whether or not they have a liaison, right? I've I've reached out to them, I've drafted some language, and and it, it relates to fee issues and bylaws. I, I will just put that out there now, um, and so that's that's an ongoing conversation. I it's just during those conversations they were like, oh, a liaison might be helpful, right? And so I wanted to bring that forward. Although I'm also torn because I'm not sure after this next set, there's been a couple of things that we've needed to do to help the board do its work as a council in terms of bylaw modifications, in terms of public ways, authority granting and stuff. And I think this one thing I'm working on now might actually be the last one, as long as TSO revisits the second half of the referral on the public ways issue related to lunch carts and stuff, because I think they only got through half their have the referral. Um, I think those are sort of the last lingering things. And so if they really are the last lingering things, then they probably don't need a liaison anymore, right? Um, and if they've got people already in touch with them for that, then maybe we don't need to add that as an extra liaison thing. Because right now, if I'm counting, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, plus the four in here, which is 10, which is a lot. <laughs> Any other comments about this particular Board of License Commissioners, whether that should be added or not? I, I feel like with Doug Slaughter on that committee, uh, he's an incredibly experienced because he's been a select board member. I think they're in a really strong position uh, and certainly would reach out if they needed help. Um, so I don't think they need one. So I think the general sense is that they do not need one, but that Mandy will continue to serve informally as she's working on these final things. Um, yes, Mandy. Continue, I had a different. Oh, okay. Yes, I do, I have, um, good. So let's, yeah, let's move on and go ahead, please, Mandy. So I understand the potential need for a liaison to the Board of Health um, because of the regulatory powers um, and similar to where the Board of License Commissioners was at one point and all. I'm struggling with why the CPAC needs a liaison and also why the Council on Aging does. Um, so if anyone could help me out with those, those ones, because I, I still don't quite support those in looking at counselor commitments and stuff um, and trying not to overburden us. Those are two I don't quite understand at this point why they would need them a liaison. Jennifer. Um, I can speak to the Council on Aging. I don't, 
I think that came about because there is a counselor that, you know, wanted to be the liaison to that committee. Um, now, whether that could just, again, be informal, but I, I think that may be how that came about. I mean, I believe um, Dorothy Pam has been serving as like a liaison to that committee. So that's my understanding of how that came to, to be there. And I think for some reason, Paul suggested keeping that on there and I don't remember why, um, but is there, there's some new work happening um, and help me remember there's a new initiative that's happening, right? With older adults. And I'm not sure if the Council on Aging is working with, in, is, is part of that initiative. Um, that's just more, a little more information. I see Anika and Jennifer both have their hands up. Jennifer, did you wanna just add to what? Uh, it's the, um, it's the, Reimagining aging in Amherst. I think that's the initiative. Mm -hmm. And is that is that happening through the Council on Aging? Yes, it is. Okay, Anika. Have uh, let's see. Have these committees requested a liaison? Do we know? Yeah, I I, I don't I. Council on Aging, I think Jennifer hit the nail on the head. I think Dorothy really wanted to be a liaison and has been a liaison to that committee. Um, and not sure about any requests. Um, Mandy, maybe Mandy knows. As far as I know, no. Um, but again, you know, not, not to... I, Dorothy has been the liaison to Council on Aging. Kathy has been the liaison to CPAC. Kathy has regularly reported CPAC's um, progress on their recommendations to the council while she's been a liaison. I'm not sure I've ever heard a report from Dorothy on Council of Aging on anything. Um, so while there's been a liaison there, it's a lot of times we never even get a report. That's not to to say Dorothy's been doing anything wrong. It's just part of why I'm I'm not understanding why a liaisonship is necessary for that committee. And with CPAC, we, we obviously deal with their recommendations every year, but they're so well established that I'm still not sure we need a liaison <laughs> versus people who just want to follow the committee, right? Like, they, they know they need to submit a report to us, they submit their report um, when they're done with it, right? And so I, I just, again, thinking about our own time and commitments that these recommendations, if followed, then require of counselors, I'm just not sure those two make sense. Would it make sense because sitting through finance yesterday and now for two meetings reviewing the CPA um, committee's recommendations, there have been some really interesting things that have come up um, that need further kind of review and evaluation. Um, would it make sense to do the CPA committee like we're doing the planning affordable housing, um, DAC and TAC to have a person that's on the finance committee be that sort of because that's where it seems most relevant, right? Is they bring it first to the finance committee, the finance committee discusses it and then makes recommendations to the council. Would that feel more like a better, a better way of, of recommending that one? And Jennifer, you have your hand up and also Anika. So Jennifer and then Anika. Um, thank you. So I think um, since we do revisit this, it seems like annually or at least with each new council session that um, I think if, if we have a counselor who wants to serve as a liaison to the Council on Aging that I don't see what harm there is in that and we could ask her to make regular uh, reports. Um, I, she also, you know, talking about Dorothy Pam represents a district with a large elderly population. So I think that's also, you know, a part of her interests and there is a large elderly, you know, population in Amherst. So I yeah. don't, 
see what harm there is in, in having a liaison for this council session. And it could be revisited during the next term um, if we have, yeah, and if there's an, there's an interest in, I think, a need. Thank you, Anika. Uh, yes, I think that probably Amherst in general has a large um, aging population, right? Um, but so also with, so my question with, for Michelle, so seeing as you are already meeting um, with the committee, with the Community Preservation Act, is it necessary to have that additional uh, liaison or is this something that just the finance committee could report on when they're giving their reports, just including that in to lessen spreading people out since you're meeting anyway, that it could just be. That's my feeling. I mean, the finance committee has to report out on those inner, you know, on that, on their recommendations to the full council. Um, so if we're wanting to make this lean and really be able to focus um, our capacity, I don't, I don't see a strong argument for keeping it um, myself. If it was going to, you know, it, the only, I highlighted it because sort of the finance aspect of it. Um, and so my only suggestion would be to have it be one of these sort of um, like to have someone like Kathy who's on the finance committee continue to serve, but have it be indicated that the reason for having a liaison to that committee is like these other ones, um, how it interacts with finance. Um, so that's my feeling on that. Um, does that, does that answer your question, Anika? It does. Okay. <laughs> Pat, do you have any thoughts on this? Well, I was thinking if there is going to be a liaison, it would be, uh, to CPAC, it would be good if it were a finance committee member, but I don't see the need for that liaison, but. Jennifer. This is a little jumping around. Um, I guess I just also wanted to add in terms of the Council on Aging that since the interest is also from the counselor who chairs um, the TSO, that, that also makes sense for her to be the liaison because I do see Council on Aging as being an important part of services mm -hmm. you know, yeah, to our elderly I, population. Absolutely. Yeah. I just want to make sure that we keep our conversation centered around the actual committees and less around the individual counselors. Um, not that I don't see that as an important connection, but just um, to sort of make it equitable for all, because there might be, I think Pat expressed that the Disability Access Advisory Committee was important to her. So I just, if I want to keep our mind focused on what we think are the committees that most need it and how to structure it so that we're getting the best value out right. of that relationship. I guess I would put in a plug <laughs> for the, you know, I think the Council on Aging, you know, again, because we have such a large elderly population in the town. Um, is one that is uh, deserving of a liaison, you know, especially since we have the chair of the uh, TSO would like to put, you know, um, serve as that liaison. Mm -hmm. So it's not taxing somebody's time who doesn't, you know, have the time. Yeah. Mandy? Yeah, I, you know, I respect that we know of someone who wants to serve on it, but we can't assume that's the only person that might want to serve as a liaison to a specific committee or that they would be appointed by the council to that committee. There are probably other committees that we don't know about who would who have counselors who would love to quote, be a liaison to those committees. I don't think the fact that we know of a counselor that is interested in being a liaison should, can, could, should, factor into whether we recommend a liaison for that committee, that, that the council formalize a liaison role for that committee. I think we should be concentrating on, does that committee need a liaison? You know, I, I just during this meeting said, hey, I'd be willing to be one for the Board of License Commissioners, but I don't know whether they need one or not, right? And we determined maybe they don't, right? And 
just like, you know, I haven't re mentioned the recreation committee, the liaison who I'm not even sure who we had as liaison to the recreation committee. I don't think we ever received an, a report from the liaison to the recreation committee on the council for three years, just like, you know, so it's not just the council on aging that we never did. And I want to make that clear. It's not one particular person that didn't make reports. There were many, <laughs> many of these committees that didn't actually formalize that the liaison never reported on to the council. Um, and the councils on aging is one of those that I see is, I don't understand what that liaison would do because I'm not sure what the council on aging needs the council for. And that's part of the li liaison role is to facilitate that conversation for things that the council will need to act on. And I'm just still struggling with why the council on aging needs a a liaison for that facilitation. You know, I could make the same argument with, I guess, the campus and community coalition um, in terms of a quote liaison versus a representative to report on contacts and conversations, right? You know, I if, if we're going to say because there's a lot of aging people in town and elderly people in town, we need a liaison there. Well, we absolutely then need one for the CCC because there's a lot of students in town too, right? You know. Um, and maybe, you know, I, I feel like the CCC one is necessary because I feel like we've had strained relationships with the university. I'm not sure that same necessity in my mind applies to the Council on Aging, which is why I'm really struggling with that recommendation in particular. I'm going to go to Anika, but before that, I just want to ask, would it be helpful to look at the charge of the Council on Aging, just to remind ourselves what that council or I'm sorry what they're what they're doing and, and and how they might because I see your point Mandy about you know what do they need the council for um, and I think that that's an important thing for us to keep in mind as opposed to how we're thinking about someone who wants to be a representative to just make reports um, I think those are different things please Anika uh, yeah, so even, you know, going back to if I understood clearly that uh, Paul had pointed out that if someone wanted to have, a council wanted to have interaction with these committees, they could do so. Uh, I'm also concerned if you think TSO, there are quite a few vulnerable populations um, in Amherst. So if we just as TSO come out and say, okay, council of aging to Mandy Jo's point, I mean, we have a lot of vulnerable people there. There's a lot of students, some homeless students. I mean, we have homeless residents, you know, we have people struggling in, in many different capacities. So, um, you know, especially with TSO and we're talking about uh, people and, you know, services to many, you know, vulnerable and underserved populations. And we're, will we come across that we're singling out and saying just like Council of um, Aging and why is that? those are just my questions there. Mandy, so I, I just shared the web page for the Council on Aging, which has this one blurb on responsibilities. Yeah, see. It. Pat, please. Yeah, it, it does seem like it's directly connected to the town manager. Um, and um, it just seems uh, the executive director, but uh, it just seems like adding a liaison, an official liaison is not needed. And certainly Dorothy can attend these meetings. Um, and it, it's like I can attend DACA meetings even if I'm not the liaison because there is some benefit in it becoming from TSL, which is not a committee I'm on. Um, so that's kind of. And I think it's important to remember that in our, um, during our town council meetings, when we get to councilor comments, 
um, we can, if we are like Jennifer, you said you attend planning. I mean, there are, there is that, that time where we can make comments. I think it's sort of like a free, <laughs> a free moment to make a comment or comments about something that is going on for us as counselors. So that might be an opportunity for somebody who's informally providing that relationship to talk about it. Um, but please, Jennifer. No, I just wanted to say this, this is not like the hill I want to die on. I just, you know, <laughs> thought if, if we had somebody that wanted to be the liaison, there seemed like there were, I guess those three X's were that was the number of people on the council that listed community uh, council on aging as being one they want to have liaison. So it's fine if Dorothy is just an informal liaison to that committee, whatever, it's, it's, you know, it, I, I could go either way on this. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. Um, should we bring the list back up one more time, Mandy, just so that we can, uh, or are you working on a motion? Uh, I, I did have one additional committee that I wanted to ask about. Um, I am wondering if anyone has background on the Human Rights Commission with respect to whether it was ever discussed for them to have a liaison, um, whether they've ever requested one, whether anybody sees a need for that commission to have one. Okay. Um, it just, it's sort of, uh, it seems like, I don't know why it came to me. So if there's no other comments, then it probably means there's nothing um, super strong there. Mandy. Yeah, I, so I will say it probably came to you because many of the proclamations Joel deals with are technically situated and come from the Human Rights Commission, right? There's a lot of things that, that we do that technically is proposed by the Human Rights Commission. Um, and so that might be why you were like, huh, maybe they need one. <laughs> yeah, I think um, so. So, so th that, that's what I wanted to say. I, I don't know, um, you know, I, they don't do a lot other than proclamations in terms of interaction with the council. Mm -hmm. I, I will say that. Um, and Jennifer Moiston, I must say, has been a fantastic sort of staff liaison between the Human Rights Commission and the Council on those issues related to proclamations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what, it, I think you are absolutely right that that's one of the reasons. The other reason was I was thinking somehow about the DEI department that's getting started um, and the DEI director that's coming on. And for some reason, I thought that that person may be interacting with the Human Rights Commission. I'm not sure if that's true or not. Um, but that that sort of is what felt, oh, is this year going to be a year where the Human Rights Commission is going to have more sort of work in front of them and some new territory given there's a DEI committee or a whole DEI department that we've now brought online. Um, that feels, may I? Oh, yes, no, please, Rika, you, you had your hand up, please. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say, it seems to me that the DEI director and as an associate director would have direct contact with the Human Rights Commission. And, and I feel like um, that would be enough of a bridge. Um, I mean, I, I, I would like, yeah, I don't know. I had a clearer statement, but I lost it. But I, I feel like the, the DEI director and the whole department ha would have a direct line to Human Rights Commission. And that actually may be facilitating change and growth in the Human Rights Commission. But I think it should come from there. Um, yeah, Anika. Yes, I was just going to say with the, uh, with the director coming on, I think that they would actually have kind of more support and more interaction that would, I'm not sure exactly where their workload would increase. Yeah. Where the Human Rights Commission's work would, in, would increase, but I think that they would have more support because there is going to be a whole department. Okay, good. 
yeah, so I'm not I'm not strongly advocating for it. I just wanted to sort of bring those those things up as potential. Good I think it's great that you brought it up. Yeah, ditto. Okay, so let's see. Um, we have some potential motion or a potential motion that Mandy has crafted for us. Um, so maybe we just want to take a moment to look at that. I did it based on the conversation. So I, I just, you know, something is, is striking me here. Um, and, you know, I'm the one who, who, who highlighted the CCC and really feels strongly. I've sort of informally been sitting in that role. I think it's really important. I'm just, I'm a little bit confused given it's not a town committee. Can we actually, it feels like the better recommendation here for that one would be to say, where it's where it's relevant like for counselors who are in a district that are impacted by the university or for whatever other reasons to have to recommend that that has representatives that attend those meetings and then report back some reporting but that it's not an official liaison because i i just don't really see how that can be possible given um it's not a council it's not a committee of the town so I was going to say something similar, um, not because it's not a committee of the town, but more of the when Michelle, you said, hey, if people attend meetings, they can report stuff during counselor comments. Right. And that's what George did with the CCC over the last three years. He just during counselor comments would say, hey, this interesting thing was talked about at the CCC meeting I went to. He'd do that for other meetings, too. Um, and others would, too. So. It, it, I was leaning towards saying similar of like, maybe we delete that bullet point from this potential motion and say, that's up to the counselors that are interested in it to then say something during counselor comments. Huh. Michelle disappeared, but Anika. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we could work something out with like surrounding districts and, and at large where, you know, we can make sure someone's on, someone's attending this meeting so it's not too much on any one person so are you jennifer <laughs> well, Michelle's I, gone. I, 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 was, <laughs> I was just gonna say i agree with anika <laughs> and i forget what i was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I had a knock on the door. I stepped away. <laughs> um, While you were gone, we pretty much yeah. decided to delete this bullet point, I think. Yeah. Which is that I didn't even get to read that one, but if. if How was the CCC? <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're going to just, are we going to make any recommendation with respect to the CCC? No. Okay. Yeah. So then a CRC member declining more. Looks good to me. <laughs> well, not that that <laughs> that's not what you all needed. So we need to read the patent. We need to read the motion and then get it seconded. All right, I'm gonna read it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to recommend the town appoint liaisons to town committees as follows. A CRC. Oh, it should be the town council. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Um, to recommend the town council appoint liaisons to town committees as follows, a CRC member to planning board and the AMAHT, a TSO, a TSO member to DE, DAAC and TAC and a counselor to board of health, CSSJ and ECAC. <laughs> Do, is there a second? I'll second. Second, yes, I had to turn my mute off. <laughs> All right, I think was it Lo was it Anika or Mandy that uh, seconded it first? Jennifer I, can have it. Or Je it was Jennifer. Okay. What, whoever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Um, I heard Anika's voice first and then, <laughs> so. I think I was just laughing at some Oh, okay, so Jennifer seconds it and then any further discussion? <laughs> Um, the only further discussion I would I would add is, um, does this need to come with any recommendation with respect to the rules and just saying that we are continuing to review the rules as it pertains to liaisons or can that just be kept as a separate, does that not need to be included in this recommendation? I think that's a separate report. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. All right, any other discussion? All right, so Pat. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jennifer, how do you vote? <laughs> yes. Okay. Mandy. Aye. Anika. Aye. And Michelle is an aye. So that's great. Excellent. Okay, so I feel really productive now. <laughs> we one report is is done. So um, Mandy and Pat, this I assume comes as a separate memo to Lynn outside of the town council report that I would do for GOL. Is that correct? Or it can it can be? It, it's part of that report because the council as a whole appoints liaisons. So. Okay. I, I would potentially send Lynn the motion earlier, maybe than the report, because she might choose to then send a memo to the council requesting people think about and, and you know, ahead of this recommendation, she might choose to do something else with it, but um, it can just be in the report. Perfect. Okay, great. All right. <clears throat> so I said I was going to uh, go ahead and look at the time when we finished that. And so it's 10.08. Um, and I'd like us to be finished by 11 to honor the time commitment that we've made. So we could. Um, is there any strong feeling one way or another about whether we should do the Tibetan National Uprising Day proclamation and just and get that done and then um see what time we have left in that case we would definitely need to report to the council that we're not finished with the rules of procedure um or do we want to go to the rules of procedure and hold off on the tibetan national until next time mandy i would say do the proclamation to get it over with um because i'm not sure in 50 minutes we're going to get through all the rules anyway and so we can potentially if we get the proclamation over with free up more time at the next meeting to really concentrate on rules. I think that's great. Um, um, Pat, did you have- I agree with that, but I also wanna uh, get in here somewhere today, uh, the a review of the committee organization, uh, the uh, proposal uh, of reducing the number of people on committees and stuff like that. I think that's a fairly important issue. Um, so I'd like to see it addressed soon. Um, sure, yes. Um, so <clears throat> the Tibetan National Uprising Day Proclamation has to be completed by the end of our next meeting. We've been working on the rules of procedure and haven't really made it through very far. So I really feel like that needs to be a priority. Um, but we could certainly dedicate, um, you know, maybe what we'll do is we'll do the, the proclamation and then we could dedicate whatever time we have left to having a first sort of uh, broad discussion about the committee structure before we end. Does that work? Okay, does that work, Pat? Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, the other, the other thing is the proclamation is the same proclamation that's been used for a couple of years with date change, you know, there, what was changed, Mandy? I'll point that out when we get to it. Okay, because when I read through, I didn't notice it. Yeah, no, there, there were some small changes. Um, I, I would say as long as we start next meeting with the rules, I'm okay with the plan to talk about the committee structure today because I think we might be able to get mostly through it today with the time yeah. we have, but I wanna make sure the first item on the next agenda is the rules then. Great. Um, I. 
would like to ask, is it possible for me to turn over the chair for five minutes? I have to take care of something to either Pat or Mandy um, who have experience. Well, Anika is the vice chair. Oh, You're that's welcome. right. <laughs> that's the way to do it. <laughs> Thank you um, for that reminder. Yes, Anika, would you be so willing just to chair us for the next five minutes? I just have to take care of something really quickly. So I think Mandy's going to bring up the proclamation and you guys can just start working on that and then I will be back um, quickly. Does that, is that okay, Anika? You need to unmute, Anika. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll be right back. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, and Thank looking you. at it. <laughs> Anika, would you like me to go through the changes? <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> so uh, I don't know who's sponsoring this on the I council. am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else, Pat? Not that I know of. OK, because there was a whole list last year. Um, I honestly don't know. There are, I, I'm hearing you in the background. There are other uh, folks who would like to sponsor this, including Lynn and Shalini. I was going to say Shalini was probably one of them. Yeah. Yes. And I'd also like to add my name to sponsor this, please. I think I got everyone now. Anyone else want to be on the list? So that's the first change. All of the rest here, the the whereas is I bolded. So basic there. Um, last year, there was a comma after culture. We do the Oxford comma tend to. So, and then... I think that's all that's showing on this screen. So unless people... Oh, in last year, it was also a comma and not a semicolon. That might have been a, a transcription yeah. thing. Um, any other changes that aren't showing in the first four paragraphs before I page down? I'm just going to page down. Yes. Okay, so which one was one, two, three, four. So the next ones are the next three. No, the next two were in last year's proclamation. And then there were some that were not in the proclamation last year. And Pat, the proclamation last year also had some that were deleted from this year's. And I think that's in an attempt to um, sort of make it similar year after year or get rid of some of the things that happened within the last year so that those yeah. don't be changed year on year. Yeah. I apologize. I didn't look at this carefully. Um, so a comma after Asia there. So a lot of these are that way, commas and just mm -hmm. wording there. Um, we like to keep it one sentence per whereas in GOL. So this whereas was actually all of those sentences that I've now yeah. highlighted, the two. And so I couldn't figure out how to make that one sentence. So I split it and made each one of them one sentence. <laughs> 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 <Thank you. laughs> and then the, the next one was again, an attempt to make it one sentence instead of yeah. three. And if people are having trouble reading it in this marked up way, I can show it non-marked up. Now the marked up way helps. At least it helps me. I don't know if it helps everyone. No, it's, it's great to see the, it's nice to see the changes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Shall I page down further? Mm -hmm. And then the only other changes other than the, the last where as always gets a period, um, fixing our standardization of the voted this blank day of blank. Um, and in here, we, we don't, this is a Alyssa holdover. Alyssa needed the word hoisting of a flag. So we're attempting as we get through these this year and last year, we missed this one last year, to change it to raising the flag instead of hoisting the flag. <laughs> the memory of Alyssa will live on in the Thank God. flags. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> At the Black History Month um, flag raising, I could, there was a lot that went into actually getting the flag raised and everything. It was interesting. That's because it's hoisted. It's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to become a liaison to the pro hoisting committee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. So those were my recommended changes. Now, I'm just gonna check to make sure there weren't any other counselors that I missed in terms of sponsorship. No. Okay. And it's still sponsored by the Regional Tibetan Association? Yes, it is. Do we know if um, Sarin Dundup is still president? Uh... I would have to check that. I'm sorry. Okay. I no, know he was president, but he may have. Yeah, that might. Have... Me, I can try to check quickly. I pulled that from last year, so that's why. Yeah, I it may. I think it's a, a different person this year. We can leave the president out and just say Regional Tibetan Association of Massachusetts, which means then that every year we don't have to check who their president is. I'm fine with that. But if there's no reason that it has to be in there, um, the registered a agent is no, that's not it. Okay. It's easier for us if we just refer to the association. Yeah, I think so. And potentially, there is a new president. Consistent. Pardon me? And more consistent whenever we refer to like the Human Rights Commission, we don't say who's chair. So. Um, yeah, and this there was a change because I met the new president okay. at, a, at a Tibetan dinner. Uh, but I mm, frustrated with myself right now. Okay. It's okay. Yeah, we're we're going to be consistent by not naming the president or chairs of these community sponsor organizations. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any other um, changes? Okay. So I think we can um, Make a motion then. I move to. Uh, Go ahead, Pat. Yep. To, uh, to recommend the um, the Tibetan uprising proclamation as it, uh, amended. Clear, consistent, and Wait. actionable, Pat. Uh, yep. Thanks. <laughs> Sharp, huh, Nika? <laughs> I'm never going to forgive you for that comment. <laughs> I stand by it. <laughs> seconds. <laughs> okay, Jennifer seconds. And Mandy, how do you vote? Any further discussion? Mandy? Aye. I'm an aye. Anika? Aye. Jennifer? Ooh, aye. Pat? Aye. Great. Okay. We are getting some work done. <laughs> This is great. <laughs> All right. So, yes, it is 
20. Um, <laughs> I think the uh, I think that what Mandy suggested is is good. The rules of procedure are certainly um, a little bit. Th there's some lifting that we're going to do with the, with that review, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, so just to be clear from my end, I will let Lynn know that um, our report is that we're not completed with the rules of procedure, <laughs> um, and I will include that in in my in my report. Um, so let's move to, we do have to have a public comment period as well. I'm not seeing anybody in the attendees. So um, let's pull up, well, actually, before we do that, um, I wanted to point out if we're moving on now to our presentation and discussion items, town council standing committee structure. I wanted to point us to the rules of procedure 10.2D, um, which I don't think are um, surprising to anyone, but uh, so the pro the 10.2 is the process to establish council committees. 10.2D says the council shall review its committee organization each year. And as the GOL committee, we're tasked with doing that. So uh, we also had a counselor, um, Pam, who has sent in, and I've included in the packet, her ideas about restructuring. Um, but before we take a look at that, uh, I'd like to just sort of open us up into a broader discussion um, to share our thoughts on this. And Pat, you might, do you want to, do you want to start since you had? Uh, sure. I think the thing that uh, the question about proposing committees be reduced to three people, I feel really strongly opposed to that. I think it limits the range of uh, opinion that can exist on a committee. Um, and I think that range is important. So I would hate to see any committee reduced to three people. Was that on Councilor Rooney's uh, recommendations that you're referring to? Yes, it to? was. Yeah. OK, OK. Yeah. Jennifer. Um, well, I just wanted to respond to, I guess, following on what Pat said. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't disagree about that. When you reduce it to three, you do have a smaller range of points of view. I think that maybe the recommendation came about not because there was a desire to have fewer people, but that if we were going to create, have have some committees perhaps have not as, had so much on its plate that if we were gonna create another committee, would we then have to reduce the number? I think that's how it came about. Um, and this may be, this is just a comment um, and there's probably, you know, it's maybe I'm sure too late and maybe would be confusing to the public to change committee names. But as someone who until a month ago was just a member, you know, Jane Q Public, I always found it um, confusing the name Community Resources Committee and Town Services and Organization Committee, which seem the names have very little to do with what the committees do. So if you were someone in the public that was interested in zoning and land use and economic development, it wouldn't probably occur to you to go look up the community resources committee. So again, that's, I just put that out there that I, I think it's, um, again, there's like these, those two committees, their names have like nothing to do with what their charges are. Um, I don't know if we can do anything about that. Just a comment. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Pat, did you want to respond to something with the, that first? Yeah, I just want to thank you. I just wanted to say that we used to have five committees and the thing that we looked at said five, but there are only four committees listed. The fifth committee was OCA, Outreach something. <laughs> uh, Outreach Communications and Appointments. But that yeah. was when we had an audit committee as a formal committee too. 
Yeah, but the audit committee, which it was a very small committee, got put into finance, um, which where it belonged, and OCA got divided up. So I guess what I'm I'm really saying is I'm not afraid if there's a fifth committee. Um, I think that that could be handled rather easily because we've worked with that structure before. Um, so. Mandy? So I, I wanted to comment on the reduction, the potential to reduce to three members. Um, I understand the desire in terms of dealing with counselor capacity, right? And I know I'm I'm always one that says we have limited capacity. How do we do this, right? Um, because it's not just our standing committees that counselors serve on. We have three on JCPC. Um, we have um, two on the school building committee. We have one on the library building committee. You know, some of those will go on for more years than others. But there's there's other committees in here that that we've got counselors serving on in addition to the standing committees. Um, but I'm always concerned at three because any two of those members can never talk about any committee business with each other because it would be an open meeting law violation. And that we already have so many concerns about open meeting law with a group of 13 and seven and five, right? You know, I mean, how many times have three of us on CRC already been together and been like, oh, we got to stop a conversation. Now imagine if it's two, right? <laughs> and you're trying to talk about agenda setting without ever talking about substance. It becomes much more problematic. Um, and so I get concerned about anything that says three, um, unless it's a committee where it's unlikely to have conversations on those subject matters outside of committee, but I'm not sure there's any committee like that except maybe audit when we had an audit committee. That was probably one of the ones that I think could have truly handled three without an issue regarding open meeting law, but I'm not sure any other committee of our council can do that. Um, I'd be willing to consider name changes, Jennifer, despite the people are starting to do it. I actually think town services and outreach communicates what it does okay. Um, unfortunately, it never has dealt with outreach. <laughs> That's part of the problem. And I think what Pam Rooney was sort of indicating with the potential for a fifth committee. Um, community resources committee, I'm not sure what we would do it to, but if you've got suggestions, you know, I, I think, I'd be open to hearing them. I don't think the committee names need to be set in stone at this point in time. They're only, CRC is only two years old at this point, I think on committee names, you know. Um, I don't, to, to respond to Pat and then I'll be quiet. I don't know about numbers of committees, right? I, I read the potential for pooling outreach out, which has a potential desire, right? Town services, didn't deal with outreach. OCA, when we had it, didn't deal with outreach. One of the reasons GOL restructured was in hopes of figuring out how a committee could find time to deal with outreach, right? Um, and the committees have yet not done it. I don't know whether that's a committee, if we just stuck outreach to a specific committee, whether that one could have three, that might be possible. I don't know. I do get concerned again with capacity with five. Um, I'd have to look at specifically numbers. Um, and, and then I also get concerned not just with capacity with meeting times, um, which is another issue, but we've already struggled with our committees this year figuring out when they can meet without overlapping with other committees. Um, and so I think we have to be cognizant of that. The more council committees we create, the harder it is to find meeting times um, for those committees. But I'm not opposed to considering a fifth committee because I think we've short shrifted outreach and it, this might be a solution to not doing that. Yeah, I will say I support um, both name changes um, potentially as well as having a committee that focuses on outreach and that could include economic development outreach, um, which I know Anika has spoken about, that could include um, anchor institutions um, like UMass and Amherst College. And so I think that that would actually be a very beneficial committee to have um, and one that would allow for focus on some really important matters that I think are sort of 
falling through the cracks at times. Um, and that could, if we made some real, if we put some real work into, could really um, be a huge benefit throughout the whole town. Um, so that's my, my feeling on that. And yes, Jennifer. Um, I, I agree <clears throat> with that. Um, and I do think, because I believe now arts and culture and economic development are within the CRC purview. And, you know, those, those might be more appropriate, you know, might uh, um, reduce some of CRC's scope and would be appropriate in an outreach committee. Yeah, arts and culture, economic development, and perhaps town and gown could be um, sort of in, the, in that um, umbrella, Anika. Yes. Yeah, so was the was the consensus that um, so arts and culture, town and gown, and uh, and then economic development would be too much to put over to TSO and have that outreach be activated? Um, mm -hmm. Was that the was that the concern? you know, coming from this, that that would be too much to put on because I know that, um, you know, out, outreach definitely needs to be, or at least my outreach definitely needs to be like top, you know, list or like a, a bit, have bigger presence with TSO as it is one of the initials. So. Yeah, are you on TSO, Anika? Okay, who else is on TSO here? Okay. Um, yeah, I think my understanding is that there's sort of a running joke that the O in TSO is non-existent in some ways or has not been um, fully realized for whatever reasons, because town services takes up a lot of, you know, um, mm -hmm. the, the runway of the work. So yes, yeah. Jennifer. Yeah, no, I mean... <clears throat> I always associate TSO with transportation. And actually when I wasn't on the council almost for a while, just thought the T was for transportation. So um, yeah, I don't know if the transportation and parking issues are taking up so much because they're huge. So much of the TSO focus that the outreach has kind of gotten lost. I did have a, I'm sorry. Can I yeah, go ahead? No, yeah. I did have a, um, a similar experience we went on. It was like, what are the concerns? And then it was like, okay, the people, you know, and, um, you know, we're working, <laughs> working in the people because, you know, how, if we, even if we're just, how do, are we discussing town services without people, mm -hmm. you know, and without outreach? So, mm -hmm. but I, I definitely agree that if there needs to be a, or um, a commitment to it. Yeah, and I wonder if it could be a, a, a subcommittee for, I mean, given the fact that parking is gonna take up and a lot and transportation is gonna continue to take up a lot of time, I think in the next, um, in the next period of time, does a subcommittee make any kind of sense or are we, or I, I guess Anika, yeah, I'm curious what you. Uh, I, I agree because if you think about it, even with TSO, you would have, you know, some members that would probably be more concerned or more focused on, uh, you know, parking and, and sidewalks and that when we're all there, then maybe is it possible to, to split, you know, or to have something, whether it's in TSO or does it need to be separate, you know, where that focus is more on, um, the outreach and, and working with appropriate organizations. Jennifer. Yeah, I was just wondering in terms of capacity <clears throat> and if you were to form um, a fifth committee, how many, does anybody know how many council members now are only on one committee? I know Pam Mooney is on one committee. So, so I mean, I'm just, when I'm wondering if there's enough councilors only on one that so there are 20 councillor spots for council committees, um, which means in theory seven are on two, right? We have four, we have four council committees, five members, five councillors each, that's 20. 
we have 13 counselors, that means half of the counselors are on two. Um, adding a fifth committee would require nearly every counselor to be on two council committees. And then there are three JCPC counselors. There are two building school building committee. There's one library building committee. So that's six additional committee assignments there. BCG has some committee assigned, has three people on it, but meets so irregularly that it probably doesn't add much um, commitment to it, unlike the school building committee and the library trustees. JCPC is a very concentrated eight week, every week for eight weeks and then done. Um, but school building and library building are going to be as intensive as a council committee. So that's an extra three. So we're looking at right now we have 18 plus three JCPC sort of commitments. Um, so that's 21. We add five more, we're at 20s. No, we have 20 plus three plus three, which is 26 commitments already. We add five more, we're at 31. So there would be some that need to be on three. There are already some on three. Um, I, I don't know whether I'm the only one. I serve on GOL, CRC, and JCPC. Um, I don't know whether there's anyone else. Well, Anika's on the, li the library, Jones Library building. Oh. And, and TSO, so Anika's on three too then, GOL, TSO, and Library Commission. Uh, Kathy's on three, JCPC, School Building, and Finance. Um, and that I'm on it. two council and one. Oh yeah, you've got, you've got the yeah. non-council one, Michelle, yeah. So there's a couple of us that are already on three. Um, and there's some on one. And there's some on one, yeah. I think Anna is only on um, TSO, is that right? Or, okay. In my understanding, it was at her request because she's VP and that- Yes, and that makes sense. And Lynn, I think, is Lynn not allowed to be on- She's on finance. She's on finance, that's right. She is on finance, correct. And president, so that's like the equivalent of- <laughs> That's like being on <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then the question was if, if the outreach could have three people. I don't know, maybe it couldn't because they, be they would be discussing outreach issues. That would be a problem. So I see um, that Pat had her hand up and Anika had her hand, has her hand up as well. I do want to bring up the um, charge for TSO so that we can look at it. Um, but let's go ahead and um, Pat and then Anika, please. Yeah, I just wanted to comment. Uh, we were talking about maybe outreach being a subcommittee of TSO, and, and that really is up to the committee. It's not up to GOL to say to the committee, you have to have a subcommittee. So uh, that, that made me uncomfortable. Um, I'm not saying that maybe there doesn't need to be a whole new committee, but uh, determining subcommittees yeah, is not our charge. You're absolutely right, yes. And can you make that bigger? Yes, I can try. And Anika? Yes, yeah, so we're, I, I'm not speaking for TSO, but I do know that there are, you know, conversations around that. And perhaps you could have uh, the counselors that really are focused on this outreach or, or have interest. Like I know for myself, my entire background is pretty much economic development, arts and culture and outreach. So it's just something that I'm naturally passionate about, but I'm also I'm also passionate about, you know, retaining my capacity to be, you know, to function at my best. So, um, you know, maybe there's that possibility um, because I think especially when we all, we all are spread out, but if you have, maybe some people that's just naturally what they do or background, it could be, you know, oh, um, easier not, you wouldn't be as, as spread out as much, you know, just throwing that out as an option. Yeah. So I'm just reviewing this quickly. Can everyone see this, Pat? You can, can you see yeah, it? Yeah, I can see it now, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Hmm. Anika, from your perspective, how much work is being done um, with the community participation officers? Is that 
Is that something that has come up in meetings? Well, we are just uh, structuring. We actually had um, a questionnaire that came in terms of, you know, similar to what we did here, but in, what are those priorities? So I expect that the next meeting will have that, but I know um, at the top of my list was, uh, you know, outreach and, um, you know, outreach and community participation. So I would expect that, you know, after this next meeting, we'll move forward. We had a, a little a lapse with um, DSO, some of the meetings accommodating, you know, trying to fit in uh, Thursdays around um, other committees meeting. So. Yeah, and that's the problem that Mandy was referring to, which is, again, the scheduling problem becomes, <laughs> that's a real problem. Um, and adding another committee would certainly add to that. Uh, does it feel like sort of to the point that you were making, Pat, you know, which I think is is really well made about it's not our, you know, it's not our purview to decide on subcommittees for a particular um, committee, but is there any cons consultation and we're lucky to have Anika here, but would sort of the whole committee want to be consulted if we were gonna gonna go and say, <laughs> hey, we're gonna pull this out and you know, um, or is that a larger council discussion? Mandy. So that was actually one of the things I was just gonna suggest is it looks like we're talking about potentially removing duties from both TSO and CRC and creating another committee and putting those duties in that other committee. And so um, reaching out to both of those committees and asking those committees to discuss that potential removal um, of those duties into a new committee would be um, polite. <laughs> From chair to chair, obviously I'm the chair of CRC, so I can... <laughs> take that direction from you, Michelle, in a meeting here. Um, but um, I know last time GOL did this reorganization and essentially renamed OCA to something else and completely changed its duties. We had a lot of pushback at the council when we did it and proposed it to the council without having prior consulted the committees separately. Um, and I could be remembering wrong, but I believe there was some pushback of why didn't you talk to us before you made this proposal? Um, so we don't obviously have charges for the new committee, but I think we're sort of um, discussed what things would come out of each. So if Michelle talks to the committee chairs of each committee and says, here's what we're thinking of removing from the committee and here's some of the reasons, we'd like your committee's feedback on whether they would support such a removal to a new committee. Um, that could take us to, you know, getting that feedback while also drafting all of the changes in charges and new charges. I would say two two months, two meetings from now. I don't know whether it could all be done within the next before the next CR uh, the next GOL meeting, but two meetings from now in GOL, we might be able to have all of that to be able to potentially vote on a recommendation for. Um, with the actual documents and the changes to the rules that would need to be made and all of that drafted. Okay. Um, and, and we also talked about name changes, which is sort of a separate possible um, matter. Um, yes, Anika. So when this last restructure happened, Mandy, were counselors moved around as well? The restructure happened at the time of a complete council restructuring. And I think the council voted the new committees right about the time, right around January. And so it happened at the same time all committees were being reappointed by the just elected president or she was reelected, but where they, so, so there was, I mean, there was moving around, but there was not. I think most of the people that had been on the outreach communications and appointments committee moved to the TSO committee. Um, and also I think there was a lot of overlap, but it was done at the sort of restructuring time in January, February, I believe. 
Yeah, and it seems it would make sense that folks that are on that committee, there would be a lot of overlap already. Um, okay, so um, it's 10.45 and I'm gonna stop the share on this real quick. Um, we do have somebody, um, an attendee. So I would like to um, move to a public comment period unless um, there are any other any other comments on this discussion for right now. Okay, so just to reiterate, I will reach out to um, the chairs of TSO and CRC and um, ask for their feedback with respect to this. And we will see how far we get between now and the next meeting, but potentially in two meetings from now, we'll be able to discuss this. In terms of name changes, I would um, ask for you to send me um, any input you have in terms of name, ch name changes that, that uh, we could work from a list and start looking and brainstorming on that between now and the next meeting. All right, so let's see here. <clears throat> Sorry, I just wanna get my general public comment. Okay, so public comments on matters within the jurisdiction of the GOL. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the GOL chair based upon the number of people who want to speak. GOL will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment. To participate in public comment, um, please uh, use the raise hand function now and I will call on you and bring you into the room to speak if you'd like to make public comment. Okay, so it doesn't look like we have any public comment today. Uh, and so, let's see here. We may just end a little bit early. I wanna do a quick review of our um, future agenda items to make sure we're all on the same page about that. So it sounds to me like we're going to focus our energy at our next meeting on getting through the rules of procedure. If we have the information we need after um, doing this outreach to CRC and TSO chairs and getting some names brainstormed, then we'll use um, our meeting next week to continue that discussion. I'm also looking here to make sure we don't have any other so child abuse awareness proclamation um, needs to be reviewed by March 21st. So we have a little bit of time on that one. Um, and uh, um, no, I don't think that's coming here yet. So we can wait on that one. Okay, are there any other agenda items that members would like to add? Yes, Pat. You had brought up last time uh, uh, developing an equity lens to review uh, uh, as a review process. Um, and I think that's pretty critical. I'm not, so if that, I'd like us to be looking at that. Sure. Um, and what I was hoping to do is provide some other models that I have found um, to the group so I can get those into the packet so we can start reviewing and looking at those and then That'd be great. timing will um, we'll go from there. Um, Anika, just to fill you in on that, we talked last week about um, the GOL developing a process for um, reviewing everything that we do through an equity lens um, throughout the council and um, so that's something that we are gonna work on as a group here. Great. All right. Are there any other questions or comments? Let me see. Um, I don't have any items that were not anticipated and I do not have any additional announcements 
Um, so if there are no other announcements from members, we can move to adjourn the meeting. Anything yeah. else? Okay, so 10.50, Athena. <laughs> Thanks, Good Michelle. Meeting. All right, great meeting. Yeah, okay, thank you, you all. See you bye next bye. time. Bye-bye.